uh, hey, Steve, it's obviously a good complication, but how much trickier <clears throat> is it to think go big, go small when Looney is playing like this? Um, you know, you want your best players on the floor. Some, uh, he's been really good, but yet you do so well when you go small. Just yeah. how, how much more complicated is it, say, this year than it's been in the past? Um, I don't know that it's that more complex, really. I mean, we faced the same issues last year in the playoffs against Memphis and Boston, and, you know, you, you make a, adjustments as you see fit. And um, so that might mean going smaller, getting another shooter on the floor. But time and score can dictate some of that. Um, every game's so different, and, and so you just have to go in um, with an open mind and, and, and feel the game. But um, I think it's it's a it's a, because of the the nature of our roster and the and the makeup of our roster. It's a decision we've we've had to make um, many times over the years. Sort of related question, I guess. Given Jordan, Jordan obviously played well last night, and um, given this matchup, how how much more does he sort of fit this matchup? It seems the way the Lakers play should fit Jordan's style more, and, and maybe tempt you to go small more. Yeah, I mean, Jordan played great. I mean, he, you know, we needed his scoring and his playmaking, and um, so every every series is different, and uh, you just try to get a feel for it. And uh, I thought last night's game called for um, a lot of minutes from Jordan, and and um, he came through and uh, and gave us uh, good production. So um, tomorrow could be totally different. You just you just never know. You got to play it by ear. Steve, I know you were asked about the uh, the free throw discrepancy last night, but when they take 17 before you guys take one against that interior defense, what are little ways schematically you guys can maybe get to the line earlier on? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I, I, I thought um, we, we did some good things getting the ball into the paint, um, but, um, you know, you have to – to get a feel for Davis um, and, and their, their size and length before you can really, um, you know, figure out exactly how you're going to attack. So I think game, game ones are great for that reason. You, you feel it, then you see it on tape, and then you, you can adjust from there. Um, I just think um, we can play with more force overall. I thought they were the more aggressive team <coughs> last night. And uh, with with a little more energy, a little more force, then I think we're much more likely to to be attacking uh, and and getting to the foul line. Hey Steve, you just mentioned playing with more force. You talked about playing maybe smaller. That almost seems to be a trigger for Draymond to to play that way because you might have to play him at small ball five. Have you? Talk to him. Do you feel like you need to tell him, hey, this is going to be your matchup playing against AD, and we're going to need more from you? Uh, I don't ever really need to say much of anything to Draymond. You know, he was very disappointed last night, um, you know, in the loss. And I know he feels like he could have done more. And I know Draymond well. Um, he always responds from a game like that uh, with great energy, great effort. And uh, I have no doubt he'll, he'll, he'll play well tomorrow. He'll be ready to go. Steve, were you at least a little bit surprised to see AD out there for 44 minutes, LeBron for 40? Or does that just tell you what the urgency meant to the, to the Lakers and their staff? Yeah, I think they just, I mean, I'm guessing. I'm guessing they felt like game one, uh, they had the four days of rest and we didn't. And and this was their opportunity. So, you know, the, the beginning of the fourth quarter, that's when they did not make their usual sub pattern. And so they were going for it. And uh, it obviously paid off for them, although I, I – I thought we were the fresher team down the stretch as a result. Um, and uh, that's when we made our push. Um, so who knows? But um, I, do, I do think that uh, with every game being, um, you know, every other day from here on out, that uh, I think uh, our, our speed and our pace uh, can, can definitely um, have an impact in that regard. You guys are right around 40% from three last night. Is that about what you want to see from your, your team? 40% is a good number, you know, and, and uh, I have no problem with the, the, the total number of threes as long as they're, for the most part, uh, good shots, open shots. I thought we, t we took a few um, that could have been better. Um, I, you know, we can, we, we can get closer to the line. Um, occasionally, you know, where we've got openings, but if we just step up, we're taking a, 
a 25 footer instead of a 30 footer. I think there were some plays like that, but uh, for the most part, the guys took care of the ball, um, moved it, executed well. Um, we saw some things we can add. We saw some things we can do better, and um, and that's the plan for tomorrow. Hey, Steve. Um, some of the Lakers' game plan was to shade and you know um, force guys baseline before you they catch the ball. What, how are you guys going to go into game two with the more of a mindset and build off of that? Well, they, the Lakers have a, a great defense, one of the best in the league, and, and they try to funnel everything to Davis uh, at the rim. Uh, they're playing us a little bit like we played Sacramento in the first round. You know, it's getting on top of our shooters and sending everything, um, you know, back door rather than letting our shooters come off the top. So, um, something we're very familiar with since we just did that ourselves defensively. And, um, you know, we've, we feel like we have counters um, for that. We showed some of them last night. We've got, uh, you know, some others that we can go to. And um, our guys are, are really smart, and they figure it out. We, you know, Lakers were in a basically a, a defense trying to avoid threes, and we got 51 of them up. So um, our guys know how to get them up regardless. With Kaminga, uh, is there at some point, is there a, a kind of a diminishing returns where if he if you doesn't play in a playoff series, doesn't play a couple games, it's harder to put him back in? Or in your mind, is it just the same every game with a, with a young guy like him? Yeah, the, the playoffs are tough in that regard. You know, um, Jermichael just got through basically not playing five out of the – or six out of the seven games against Sacramento um, and um, because it just wasn't an ideal matchup. And, um, you know, we've, the, 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 the opponent changes. You see, um, you know, the, the opportunity for Jermichael to play in, in, in a game like last night. He stays ready. He comes out and knocks down a couple jumpers. Like, that's what the playoffs are about. Every, every game is different. Every series is different. And so it's on every player. And I tell all our guys this, to, to stay ready. Stay ready for whatever opportunity uh, comes your way because um, – Injuries happen, um, matchups change, but it's not easy. It's not an easy um, job to, to, you know, all of a sudden get out there and play um, after sitting for a week or two. So it's all, it's all part of it. You mentioned with Jamaica that you, you thought this might be a two uh, extra big kind of series. Mm -hmm. Do you not consider Kaminga big? I know you don't really play him like that, but could he be seen at all? As a, an extra yeah. big in the series, yeah, he could be seen that way, and that and that could change. The series could could uh, could go that route, and that's why he just has to to stay ready. Steve, you mentioned you don't have to really remind Draymond of anything, but with Jordan, it's easy to forget he's still very young. I think twenty three. How much do you have to remind him to, as you like to put it, you know, be quick without hurrying? Mm -hmm. um, because it seemed like last night, compared to the King series, he did that. He was more under control, and probably yeah. probably why he played well. Yeah, I think Jordan is um, is trending in that direction. Game seven against Sacramento, he was under control and got us into our offense, made some really good plays, and um, and then that continued last night. Um, he's got to understand that, you know, a lot of the the calls that he gets in the regular season, he's not going to get during the playoffs. It's a general rule for everybody. Um, and um, you know, he had the one three that he made that he kind of uh, tried to to draw the foul and they didn't call it. Um, that's a regular season call. It's not a playoff call. And so part of being a young player is figuring out, you know, the different officiating and, and um, understanding what you're, what you're going to get, what you're not going to get. And, and the importance of, of, you know, making solid sound decisions each time down the floor. Is that a frequent conversation with him? Because it seems like he seeks contact a lot. And in, in some situations, obviously, that's a good thing. But it seems like sometimes maybe – he seeks it at the at the risk of the shot or at the at the expense of the shot. Yeah, you know, you 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 have to to gauge, um, you know, what where your advantage is. Like, if you have a true advantage and you attack, um, you're going to get the call. If you don't have much of an advantage and you sort of do the the sell job, then you're you're not going to get the call. And um, you know, against Sacramento, he had I think two different games where he had eight or ten free throws each. Um, and those were crucial plays for us. And so um, there's, I think there's going to be moments in this series where he's going to draw, draw some fouls and get to the line, and we'll need that. Um, but again, it's just finding that, that path. 
Hey, Steve. Uh, with Looney, I, I know you've talked a lot about his transformation as a player in the time that he's been in the organization, but it, if you could kind of recall at what point you felt like he could be a world-class rebounder, like you started to actually see it. Maybe not until last year, really. Um, I think Decky, our assistant, um, really started working with him last year. And, um, you know, D Loon has always had a good feel for the game. He was a guard in high school, or a wing, I should say, and uh, handled the ball and shot threes. And a lot of guys like that who um, play guard and then become big guys, they, they have a good feel because they've seen the game from a guard's angle. Uh, so Loon always had a lot of innate feel and IQ. Um, so his the first thing that he did well that kept him on the floor was um, was switch defensively. I, th I think um, I want to go back to the 17 playoffs um, when we played Houston and he was switching on to Harden and staying in front. And that's when we realized his value as a player. Uh, and his positional defense uh, inside and his strength and length. But the rebounding really has become a lead over the last two seasons. Um, it's a reminder that every player should be constantly um, trying to get better in different areas and that it's just like life. You know, we're all lifelong learners. You never sort of get to a point where you go, okay, I got it now. You just, you're constantly trying to learn and grow and get better, all of us. Back to Draymond real quick. Last night he talked about kind of the early foul troubles, how that really kind of mm -hmm. took him out of his game a little bit. What's finding the sweet spot with him and striking that right balance of being aggressive, getting a body on, and hopefully wearing down Anthony Davis early on, but avoiding that early foul trouble as well? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the trick, but he's the master. Uh, Draymond will, will figure that out. And uh, I think he, uh, he probably regrets – the one foul where he pulled Vanderbilt, he tried to draw an offensive foul against Vanderbilt. I think the refs made the right call um, where Vanderbilt was screening in and Draymond kind of pulled him. I think that was his second, maybe even his third. Is that his third? Yeah. So that one, you know, he'd like to have back, I'm sure. But um, that's the balance. But Draymond is – he's the best. He, he understands this better than anybody. And he'll he'll be out there and he'll be – Playing at a much higher level tomorrow, Steve. What do you? How would you feel about Loon taking a wide open three? Um, not great. <laughs> 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 I think Loon wouldn't feel great about it either. Um, Clay had 18 of his 25 points in the first half, and I saw like he had some good looks off the down screens. Um, you know when the when you guys were flaring, like the teams shot the gap. How do you feel about his game one performance? Yeah, I thought Clay was great. Um, came out aggressively and looking for his shot and found ways to combat the defense that he was seeing and uh, freed himself up and um, got some good looks at, uh, in the second half that didn't go. Uh, but uh, all in all, I loved, I loved Clay's game. What does it say about Andrew Wiggins that, you know, he could miss as much time as he did and just kind of step in and – look like he hasn't really skipped a beat once he did find his groove. Yeah, I mean, that, it's amazing. He missed 10 weeks, and then, you know, his first game back is game one of the Sacramento series. And and now here he is, you know, playing playing big minutes and important minutes for us. So um, we get, we're just thrilled to have him back, and this is a big series for him. We're playing a big athletic team, and, you know, he's he represents a lot of our athleticism and and um, and size so um, we uh, we're going to need wigs for sure in this series kind of going off of that question you know as an athlete as a former athlete yourself it is very difficult coming into situations like that off of being you know off for x amount of time what is some advice that you gave wiggins when he came back um really early on it was um you know, just to make sure he was getting his work in without overdoing it and, and building his stamina back up. And I told him, I said, don't don't try to be a hero. Um, listen to the performance staff. They've got a good plan. If you remember, he didn't play at all in the final two regular season games because um, they didn't feel like he had a, a foundation underneath him of conditioning and endurance. So so we just, you know, followed the performance team's plan, and, and I just encouraged him to do so because those guys know what they're doing. And 
And then Wiggs is such a great natural athlete that he um, he got his his win back pretty pretty quickly.